Okay, good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, uh, <clears throat> depending on when you're listening to this presentation. My name is Victor, and I'm going to be your uncle for this training. So this is the Cisco uh, Essentials Training for Cyber Security. So if you're new to Cyber Security, this is going to give you a heads up. This is going to lay the foundation uh, for you, uh, especially if you want to do cyber security. So I'm going to be doing uh, more records on <clears throat> our introduction to security. So that for those that want to get into cloud security, you want to go into web security, you want to go into network security, network defense, this gives you a very good foundation. If you want to go into penetration testing, you need to understand most of the concepts, of course, so that when you're running the tools, when you're running the applications, when you're running the scripts, if you see either online platforms or software that needs to do whatever in the course of your job, you have good understanding of what is happening. So this is module four. So in module one, we looked at data, different sorts of data, types of data, uh, intellectual property, personal data, data we have on social media, uh, patents and the rest. <clears throat> then we looked at attack uh, vectors. Uh, the danger actually, our data being susceptible to attacks. Then of course, we see how do we protect our privacy, our, our personal data. Then in module four, we're going to be looking at how do we protect the organization. So there are several things that we need to do in order to uh, protect the organization that we work for or consult for. Okay, so one of the things we're going to be looking at is one of them is firewalls. So what are the kind of techniques that uh, various types of firewalls that we have? Uh, what are the different types of security appliances? So I'll, I'm going to speak of both Cisco devices and also vendor neutral devices because your firewalls also can be, like I said earlier on, can be softwares, can be hardware, can be devices. Then we also look at behavior approach to cyber security because to beat a hacker, you need to think like one. You need to put yourself in the shoes of the hacker to see what the hacker is trying to do, what his goals are. Then, of course, that will not tell how you're going to go about trying to mitigate such kind of attack. So you need to understand the different frameworks that helps us understand the behavior, the approach of the hacker. That will tell us how we go about doing cyber security. So we're going to define botnets, uh, the kill chain, or we'll call the cyber kill chain. Then look at behavior-based uh, security. And one of the ways we can mitigate that is using heuristics. So because the thing is, we might not have all the antis for all the malwares. We might not have all the mitigating uh, techniques or tricks for the malwares. But what about if we look at their behavior? If we look at how they work, how they act, what they do, uh, the kind of permission they seek on our devices, then it might help us on how to approach uh, doing cyber security. Then also look at NetFlow and how it helps against cyber attacks. Okay, then we also look at something very proprietary to Cisco. Uh, we look at the Cisco approach to providing security. Intelligence is very critical. In the last two days, we've looked at uh, digital forensics, uh, uh, some created some of the foundation. And if you look at the channel and see the uh, Cisco Cyber Security Operations Associate course that are recorded is about 30 videos. You could check the channel, you're going to see that. Uh, you see that intelligence gathering is very key, right? So without intelligence gathering, you cannot tell how to um, mitigate attacks. Then we're going to be looking at the functions of the IRT, that's the incident response team within Cisco, right? We look at security playbooks. Anytime you hear the word playbooks, you're trying to look at uh, a document that is like a game plan. So how do we mitigate attacks? What is going to be the step-by-step -step actions that we're going to employ whenever we have a type of attack? If I have time, I hope I do, I'm going to do a separate record on incidents response and different plans that you could use for it. So if you like this video, make sure you like, uh, comment, ask your questions within the group, and share to friends that are actually interested in starting up a career in cyber security or trying to furnish themselves with good heads up on different aspects of cyber security. They're also going to look at 
tools used in incident uh, prevention and detection. Then we also look at IDS and IPS. So IDS is intrusion detection systems and IPS is intrusion prevention system. So the two uh, can work hand in hand. Uh, the thing is there are tools, there are gadgets that can just detect uh, a particular incident. They might not be able to respond. Then of course you have tools that are able to Pre prevent the attack from happening. So they don't just look at the attack and just throw up an alert for you. They actually go ahead to prevent it from happening. A lot of good malwares, um, bespoke and vendor centric applications or softwares can help you do that. Firewalls. So let us look at firewalls. What's the job of a firewall? Now, don't forget we're looking at how do we control security? How do we mitigate an attack? How do we stop an attack in our organization? So we're saying these are the different ways you can do that. So one of it is using firewall. What does the firewall do? It just filters, it controls all of the information coming into your system. Most systems are using a window system, you're using a Mac system, whether you use an antivirus or not, or a firewall or not, it's, each system is going to have its own inbuilt mechanism to like filter whatever kind of information comes into the system and whatever kind of uh, information uh, goes out. So this is what a firewall looks like. So that's why uh, this, uh, a block most of the times is used as a way to uh, tell us what the firewall is. So this is a server. So these are the system. So this serves as a barricade. So there are different types of firewalls. So you have the ones that are targeted at the network layer. Now, when you say network layer, for a lot of us, or most of us, or few of us, depending on the scenario or the case, as it may be, that don't have a, a deep dive uh, into uh, networking. So it's going to take up a networking course. If you check the channel, you will see a Cisco, as CCNA one, I think I've done something also on CCNA two. Uh, as time permits me, I'm going to also do some recordings on CCNA three and also CCMP. So I have all of those certific uh, certifications. Um, it will help you understand cyber security very well. So you see, there are a whole lot of tools, a whole lot of concepts, a lot of understanding that you need to know before you do cyber security. So when you hear, when you say network transport application, that simply is talking about the OSI model, the, uh, the open system interconnect. Uh, you have about seven layers. I normally say, please do not take sweet potatoes alone. Let me see how to end this show and um, kind of type. So please uh, do, do not, Take sweet, take sweet potatoes. Okay, uh, just a moment. So uh, please do not take sweet potatoes alone, right? So uh, this is what we call the OSI model, right? So it's just, um, So it's just uh, a way we can structure uh, the lines of communications we have within our system, right? So please do not take sweet potatoes alone. So this is the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, the transport layer, the session layer, the physical layer, the application layer. So we are saying that um, within your system, the way communication happens, this is the very first layer, your physical layer, where you have your some of your hardware, you have your wires, all of those connecting media. If you check the networking cost within the channel, I classified a uh, network in like three sections, three areas. You have the, uh, the connecting media, all of those devices you use to make your connection. You have the, uh, the end devices, that is your PC, your tablets, all of those stuff. And of course you have your intermediary devices. That's your switch, your, your, your router, all of those guys. So uh, those connecting media you use to make your connections are what you have in the physical layer, then the data link layer, 
Of course, that's where you have your uh, your switch layer two. That's where you have your switch. That's where you have your MAC address. And of course, network layer. That's where you have your uh, router. That we transport session, physical and um, application layer. So this is not a networking course. So you could look at the networking curriculum and uh, do some heads up there. So we're looking at cyber security, but in doing cyber security, we need to have some background in networking. It will help us better protect all of our IT infrastructure. So we say in trying to classify, <clears throat> in trying to classify the uh, firewalls, there are some that are targeted at the network layer where you have your routers. So you have routers here. You have routers here. So your routers are in layer three. So the router, routers you have in layer three, uh, you have firewalls that are targeted at that particular layer. Of course, you have some routers that are targeted at the transport layer. You have some that are targeted at the application layer, right? Just where you have your softwares and the rest. Then of course you have context aware, you have proxy server, you have proxy reverse, you have NAT, you have host based firewalls. Right? These ones operate at your system, right? Just within your PC. <clears throat> And NAT, NAT is a network address translation. Um, in networking, when we say NAT, you are saying that we're trying to translate our local IP address uh, to our public IP address, right? So within the system, if I'd say, just a second, let me see if I can grab, um, So uh, NAT, for instance, if I, if I get to my command prompt and say something like, um, say something like, if I say, um, let's see, just IP config, I get to see what my, I, these are different adapters I have on the system. So this IP config command uh, gives you IP configuration if you're, if you're on Windows. And uh, I just need to look at how I'm connecting uh, to be able to pick up what my MAC address is going to be. Okay, so this is my LAN adapter. So this is my Wi-Fi. So I'm connecting through a Wi-Fi. So this is my MAC, rather this is my IP address, 192.168.226.119. It then means my default gateway is going to be a dot one. So let's look at for that. Okay, maybe we run IP config slash all so that will give us everything right um, okay this is it good so we have um, the ip version 4 address for this system is um 192 it's using uh, a broadcom 802.11n network adapter. This is the MAC address. So this is the physical layer. Uh, this is the, sorry, this is the layer two. Yes, though you're seeing the physical address, it's also called, uh, the MAC address is also called your physical address. Uh, then you have the IP version four address. You have the uh, version six equivalent. Now I'm trying to check out for, uh, Can find this. Let me buy some time. So the okay. So anyway, this is what I'm after. So this is my IP address, but this is the local IP address, right? So this, if I say uh, my IP. 
rather my IP. So you see 102.9151.150. So of course, somebody can check out who is for this. You're able to get uh, where this IP address and maybe my location currently, right? Or who is who owns this particular IP address. So I'm running an MTN Nigeria uh, network and most likely I'm in Abuja. Right, so that's the mask I'm receiving my uh, service from, but that is my public IP address. But this is my local IP address: one nine two one six eight two two six point one one nine. So this is my local IP address. So what NAT does for you is NAT translates your IP address from this into this so that you can communicate to the outside world because the outside world does not know your internal ip address so what it understands is your public ip address so it's not that does that translation that's why you're seeing here hides or masquerades the private addresses of network hosts so this is a network host this particular pc every other system on my network is going to be taking let's say point one one three one one four one one five like that till up to five five depending on how the subnet uh, it's been uh, done and the segmentation of the network is being done. Then, but from the outside world, we are going to be seen as communicating from this. If you check my IP address, you're not going to see this. What you're going to see is this. Okay, so that's that for the different types of uh, firewalls. So let's just write on. So spot scanning. So the reason why you want to scan ports is that you want to know which ports are open and which ports are closed. And anytime you hear the word port, it's just a line of communication between point A and point B. So there are different systems we have within our, uh, our PC. How do they communicate? How do Mr. A communicate with Mr. B? How do Mr. C communicate with Mr. D, right? How, if I want to browse, if I want to use my VJ, if I want to use my camera, if I want to use a particular application, it can be a proprietary application that is tied to a particular vendor. It can be for maybe somebody else. The thing is that there's going to be a line of communication. So if a line of communication, if a port number is open, it then means that that particular application or that particular line is open. So what port scanning does is that it probes computers, servers, websites, and whatever to identify either running operating systems and services to see open ports and closed ports, right? And there are several tools you could use to do that. So ZenMap or the command line version, which is NMAP, can do that for you. So all you just need to do is to put in the target IP address, indicate what type of scan you want to use, and you hit scan. In one of the labs, we are going to run these tools separately. So what are the, some of the common response you can get is, is it open, is it accepted? Is it closed? Is it denied? Is it not listening? Is it filtered? Is it dropped? Is it blocked? So. All of these are ways we could do the second stage of hacking, which is scanning. Remember yesterday in class, we talked about the five stage of hacking, which is um, reconnaissance and footprinting, scanning, gaining access, maintaining tracks, maintaining access, then clearing tracks. I repeat, as reconnaissance and footprinting, scanning, Gaining access, maintaining access, clearing track. So scanning is the second stage. So you first do reconnaissance and footprinting through several methodologies like, like phishing, like social engineering, like who is running tools like Netcraft, being social engineer, um, social media search, doing a search engine search and all of that, doing open source intelligence gathering and all of that. That is reconnaissance and footprinting. Uh, then Second stage is you now doing scan because at the first stage, you might have gotten things like IP addresses. Uh, you might have gotten things like usernames. So this second stage is where you can now start doing scanning and you could scan a network. Every website is tied to, every website is tied to an IP address, right? That's why I can ping southtechventures.com for instance and i'm going to see 
an IP address. So this is the IP address that is mapped to this website, right? So once I get that IP address, I could run ZenMap to scan the network. So I'll do a separate video on how to use ZenMap if that's a challenge for you. Okay, so security appliances. So there are several appliances, I mean, hardware devices that you can use to protect your organization. So if you want to implement security within your organization, there are a few things you could do. You could have routers and not just any type of router. You want a router that have some security capabilities, right? They could do filtering, they could tr filter traffic. So you, you can decide, configure the router in such a way that you're saying, I don't want traffic to come from this to this. The traffic can have an intrusion prevention system. And I say you don't want it to just notify and say there's an alert. You want it to actually go ahead and stop and prevent the attack. You want such that have encryption that can encrypt your data so people cannot just sniff your network, your data, and the rest. Then you might have such that have a uh, have uh, options for uh, a VPN. You can implement virtual private network with them. So not all routers can do VPN that can create a tunnel of communication between point A and point B. So you have uh, firewalls, IPS, VPN, malware, other security devices. So uh, depending on your options, depending on where your risks are, that will not tell the devices you're going to be doing of the day. So what are the kind of attacks you can have in real time? So let's differentiate between a denial of service and a distributed denial of service. I think I've done that in module three. So denial of service is an attacker trying to attack just one device. So by DDO is an attacker, right? Maybe with a lot of handlers and zombies, several, whatever, all trying to attack a system. So when you hear the word zero day attack, think about a, an attack that happened before the owners of the software are aware of it. So it reads here, a hacker exploit a flaw in a piece of software before the creator can fix it, yes. So Google, for instance, or Microsoft or Facebook, can, there can be a flaw, there can be an issue with their system, right? So the question is, um, are they aware of it? So if there's a flaw that happens, there is an attack that happens before the owners of the application or the software or the website or whatever it gets knowledge of it, you call that a zero day attack. So uh, protecting against malware. So there are several things you could do. You could have a SOC, a secure operation center. You could have an incident response team. You could do threat intelligence. You can have a team of persons that monitor threats for you. You can also have security infrastructure engineering team. So these are different approaches you could use uh, depending on how large the organization is, what the size of the organization is. That would tell whether you're going to be running a one-man team, a two-man team, a three-man team, or you are also you might need to now transfer the risks and hire consultants to do that for you. So what are some of the security best practices? That there are quite a lot of them here. So you have perform risk assessment. We're going to start the threat management training today. I also have a record on the channel. So if you are not subscribed yet on the channel, make sure you do that. Yeah, the, the, the cyber threat management training is going to also be on the channel. So you have create a security aware, uh, security policy. So a security policy is that very first thing you want to do. That's where the job starts, right? So uh, there are several ways you could create a security policy. I will handle that in a separate video because it follows like five, six guidelines, six processes. So you first have to... Um, do some security audit, uh, maybe do a quasi or a slight vulnerability assessment. You need to learn from standard guidelines. You need to consult HR or top level management. You need to do a draft. You need to uh, get approval. You need to train the staff. You need to, uh, of course, HR have input, legal have input, top CEO have input. I already, you have a document is versionized 
that way, that way. So I'll do a separate uh, video tutorial with some samples, with some uh, examples and some sheet documents that you can see and so that you can understand how you can create a, an information security policy document. So also depends on how large the organization is, that will tell the depth of the policy document and how encompassing it should be. Should you have a BYOD policy, a bring your own device policy, a bring your own device policy tells, if you're going to bring in your flash drives, your CDs, your laptops, your tablets, your other of your gadgets, what are you able to do on, on that device within the IT infrastructure, with the, with the uh, organizational network, uh, internet, uh, whatever, right? So how do you use that? Who gives you permission to use that? At what time of the day can you use that? How do you, do you do backup there? All of those kind of stuff is what you have in a BYOD policy. So you can also have a network policy, you can have a password policy, you can have a website policy. There are all sorts of policy documents that you can have, but they are all batched into an InfoSec policy. So it just clearly outlines company rules, job duties, and expectation. You might also have some physical security measures. So you cannot talk about cybersecurity or security best practices without looking at physical security. So physical security is very critical, it's very important. So uh, restricting access to networking closet, server locations, fire using fire suppression, having CCTV cameras, having barricades, having signages, uh, do not enter staff only, are all part of physical security measures you should have. And of course, you have a whole list of them, human resource, perform test backups, maintain security patches, employ access control, regularly test incidents response. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do a video on just incident response plan and playbooks, very critical, very important. You should have network monitoring, uh, implement network security devices and a whole lot of others. Now, behavior approach to cyber security. So a botnet, so a group of bots, a bot, a, a, a script application trying to infect or affect a system. Now, it's what we call the cyber kill chain. So a kill chain is a stages that an attacker used to compromise a system. So it's seven steps. It's from bottom or bottom up, reconnaissance, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control, and action. So the steps are here listed. So this tells you, this gives you a behavioral process or step that an attacker uses to actually try to gain access to a system. So this tells you, this is going to tell you how you should implement your countermeasures, right? Uh, so you have what a honeypot is. A honeypot is typically, it can be a network, for instance, or let's say wireless router device, or it can be a website. I've done research. Uh, one of these days I'll publish the research and maybe discuss the research on the channel on deceptive techniques, right? So there are techniques you could use to lure an attacker. Um, you are trying to predict his behavior. You want to keep log, you want to capture, you want to analyze his behavior so that he cannot tell you how to, in the future, better build a defense. So flows uh, for network devices, flows typically tell you how data has been transmitted. And if you understand this, uh, this is what those softwares do to be able to understand behaviors, do some behavioral kind of detection so that they can do heuristics. They can do stuff, not just based on their signature, but based on how those the flow of packets and data. Okay, incident response team. So there are several. You want to look up USAT, APSAT, FIRST, SAT EU, SAT Engineering Institute, and several others. So this is just how do we gather uh, uh, intelligence? How do we gather understand systems? How do we uh, create a team? that can help us prevent an attack. So if you want to understand this very well, check the channel, you're going to see 
uh, intelligence gathering in the Cisco Cyber Ops, I spent a lot of time in explaining all of this. Security playbooks, like I said, I'm going to do a separate video on playbooks. So I have quite a lot of content on that. I'm going to be uploading to the channel. So it just gives you, if I have a malware, if I have a virus, if I have a Trojan, if I have a denial of service, if I have social engineering attack, if I have phishing attack, that way, like that, how do I get to get back on track? So you can have a playbook where you inform your colleagues, tell your staff, you people go through it and everybody have a responsibility. All of the things that you need to now add source that has been trashed out. So that's what the playbook is. A collection of repeatable queries, repeatable exercises that you need to go through whenever you have a particular type of incident. So you want to differentiate between a SAM, a DLP, and uh, a Cisco proprietary ISC. So a SAM is a security information and investment management system. It's just a software, right? SolarWind is one of such. They have a tool that can do security analysis for you. Then you have data loss prevention. So you want to be able to monitor and tell when something is being stolen. So there are different ways you can implement that. When I do a, a, a fiscal security uh, training on the channel, I'm going to expand more on that. You're just asking yourself, what are the different things I can do to monitor? What are different things I can do to prevent loss? Okay, so I've talked about IPS and IDS. So one is detecting, the other is not just detecting, but also preventing. They have some that are kind of uh, a measure of both. So uh, snot, source fire is such kind. Okay, that's all for module two. Thank you very much for staying up to this moment. Uh, if you have a question, don't forget to uh, comment in the comment section. Uh, we looked at types of firewall, how do we detect malware? What are the best practices for organization? We looked at uh, the cyber kill chain, we looked at NetFlow, uh, computer systems in, uh, incidents response team, how Cisco does that. And of course, you could do that within your organization. Uh, what the security playbook is. I'm going to expand it more on this on the separate video and um, incident prevention. And of course, the difference between uh, is, um, uh, IDS and IPS, um, intrusion detection system and intrusion prevention system. Okay, that's all. Thank you for listening. See you in module five.